A few additional thoughts that I have regarding your master project file, and I'm picking up where we last left off in the previous training video. My first thought is, I don't have any uh, taskbars over here in the Gantt chart. Let me clean that up just a second. Let me right click on the uh, time scale, go to zoom, go to entire project, and click OK. OK, I feel better. All right. The first thought that I have is that when you insert projects as subprojects into the master, as you recall in the previous training video, they're linked. So any changes I make here in the master, like with the duration, the start and finish dates for this subproject, Access 2010, it'll update the original project file. If I want to go ahead and do some scenarios or what ifs, where I make changes here and try this or try that without affecting the original project file, in other words, I want to break the link, then come up here and select the project summary task for that project and double click on it and go to the advanced tab and there you go. Go ahead and uncheck link to project and then click OK and any changes you make after you, well, break the link, obviously it won't update that original project file. So you can go ahead and play around with that so nobody who's working on it goes, what the fudge, and freaks out, okay? Another thought that I have is, as you recall, in the level one training video, we went over the WBS or work breakdown structure, which the definition of it is a hierarchy of tasks represented by numbers that identify the unique place of each task in the structure. So looking at the Gantt chart, we can easily identify that the unique place in the structure of examined software is a subtask to the summary task because it's indented. Now, when you go to reports or other views and it's not easily identifiable or it's not indented or you don't have the summary task that says, hey, this is a summary task or it's a phase, then adding a WBS code or even an outline code, which is a very simplistic code of the work breakdown structure, is to come up here, click on the format tab, go to the show hide group, and there you go, check outline number, and then you can see here, well, for each uh, summary task, it numbers it to, that's the third summary task and four, and then within the summary task, the first number is tied to the summary task saying, okay, this belongs to two, that belongs to two, that belongs to two, and then after that, it identifies this comes first within that group or that structure as the subtask within the summary, and this is going to be the second subtask and the third. Now, you can do it that way, but the other thought that I had is that how about when it comes to your master project, that you create your own custom WBS code that not only breaks down the structure by the outline number that you see here, but also displays the name of the subprojects and their sequence as related to other subprojects in the master. How about if you do something like that? Because maybe when I insert these uh, subprojects into the master, I'd like to say, okay, Access is going to be the first one, Excel is going to be the second one, and I want to create a WBS code that identifies that as the first one and also the name of it, Access, because, you know, when you scroll down here, and I'm looking at this, and I'm like, hey, what tasks are these for? What project? Uh, let's see, I have to scroll up. Oh, there it is, for Access 2010. Well, if I go ahead and create the WBS code correctly and insert it as a column here, then anywhere I scroll down, it'll actually tell me, without having to scroll up, to find out what task I'm looking at here, which project it's tied to, okay? So to do this, what I recommend to do first, let me go ahead and scroll up, is to go into each original file for the Access 2010. Let me go ahead and well, click off here and collapse it. And into the other one, Excel 2010, create the WBS custom codes in there saying the WBS code is 1. And then this one's going to be 2, Excel 2010, and customize them in their own separate project files and then create one here from the master that will tie and bring all those in together, okay? So let's go ahead and close out, and um, we can say yes to all, and okay to all, close out of that completely, and go into the individual project files, the sub-projects of the master, which again, as you recall, it's the access, double-click on that. We can open up the resource, that's fine. And then come up here and click on the project tab, Go to the Properties group, there's the WBS, and we're going to define the code for this project. By coming up here, clicking in Project Code Prefix, and typing in Access. When I'm looking at this in my master project, that this should be the first project that I'm looking at as far as sequence goes. It's Access 2010, and let me go ahead and choose a code. Do we want numbers? Do we want letters? I can go ahead and choose numbers. And then notice when I choose the number, it says up here in the preview, it's going to have the code 1 access 2010. 
and then it's got one. So it looks like, hey, what year is that? That's pretty funky. Well, I'll come back down here in the uh, project code prefix, hit the space bar, and I'm going to give it a dash and hit the space bar again. So when it creates that work breakdown structure, for every single task within the master project for Access 2010, it's going to say Access 2010 dash, then it'll be one, and then it'll be you know, two, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, and so on. So we click OK, click Save. We can go ahead and click OK for the resource pool. And I'll say no, we're not going to save that again. Then go back to the Exercises folder. Let's do it for Excel. Yeah, we'll open that up. That's fine. Then on the Project tab, WBS, to find the code. And it's going to be the second project within the master. In fact, I could abbreviate it more and just say Excel 10 for 2010. And then come down here. Let's also do numbered and we don't want Excel 101 so we want to come up here in the code prefix uh, box and hit the space bar give it a dash you can see up here that Excel 2010 or you know 10 for 2010 dash 1 click OK click Save click OK close out we're not going to save it again close out and then back to the master which was on my desktop let me minimize this down to the taskbar O master, double click, open it back up, open up the resource pool, then let's go ahead and define it within our uh, master project, WBS to define code. And we'll say instead of numbers for each of these uh, projects here, we can say that it's going to be, if you want to do this, you don't have to take it this far, but I'm going to go ahead and say uppercase letters and say that this is for the master. And what that is going to do is that for the subtask within the master for the inserted uh, subprojects, it'll have this identified as project A and project B. I mean, you don't have to do this, but I want to show you it at all levels when you create a work breakdown structure code and customize it like I'm doing it and click OK. And then all you have to do is go ahead and insert the WBS uh, field, which you can do that by right clicking on any uh, column header going down to insert and then type in WBS and there it is select it and there we go so you can see that there's master A master B let me collapse that so you can see within the master you got your custom uh, WBS code and then when you expand it and you're looking at those sub projects that are inserted into the master let me go ahead and hover over in between the uh, two column headers till I can get arrows pointing in opposite directions so I can double click really fast and click and drag the split bar and when I scroll down and I can no longer see the name of the project that these tasks are tied to I can just come over and look over in the WBS column here and go oh it's Access 2010 in fact let me come up here click on the format tab and uncheck outline number so it's no longer doing it here but I can view it over here and you can see that research phase is task 2 and then this subtask is tied to it, so it's going to be 2, 2, 2, all these subtasks tied to uh, the summary task, this phase. And then after that, the decimal, it will number those subtasks in uh, order. This is the first subtask, that's the second, and that's the third. Sweet. And of course, don't forget, if you don't want to go that far, but you do want to know that when you scroll down, which uh, task you're looking at belongs to what project, you can always right click and, of course, insert the project field and it tells you these tasks all belong to Access 2010 and these ones down below are all Excel okay we learned that in an earlier training video let me go ahead and click and drag the split bar back and let me come up here and right click on the time scale to zoom entire project click okie dokie now what would happen if I wanted to get the project summary report of my master here would it include just this subproject, that subproject. Well, remember that when you create a project, you have subtasks. Well, these um, subprojects are actually subtasks. So when you create a project summary report for the master, it'll include both here. As far as the dates go, because they're both starting at the same time, let's see August 1st and up here August 1st, it's going to show that in the project summary report. In fact, if this one started earlier, let's say, well, let's go way over here and say you're going to start on the 31st and click OK. Which one is it going to capture for the start date? Or will it just go ahead and capture the one that begins 
the earliest and then just say, okay, here's one that ends at the latest. So in fact, let's go ahead and scroll down, click and drag this back. So the 31st, that one ends on the 23rd, and this one ends on the 1st. Let's go ahead and create that report. Come up here, click on the Project tab, go to Reports Group, click on Reports, double click on Overview, Project Summary, click on it to zoom in. See there's the 31st. So just like any project, the first task that starts is where it begins, and it was in that uh, sub-project, Access, and then let's see when it ends it would be the last task in the second sub project on October the 1st and then the cost that we're getting down below let me click out and click on to zoom in is $1500 that's adding up both costs within the project at this time so if I come up here and click on the file tab and I do something fun let me go ahead and scroll up and I say hey I got an idea. How about when we finish this project, let's start the next one so we don't have resource conflicts here. Well, remember, what you do in here, if it's linked, is going to update the original file. So if I come over here and I click and drag that milestone and connect it to that one, and it pushes it out. Let me go ahead and scroll back over here because it kind of pushed me out here. And you can see we start up at the top, the 31st, we scroll down, we get to the next one. So when it ends on the 23rd, this one can begin on the 23rd. So when I come back up here and click on the reports, overview, project summary, click on it to zoom in. There's the 31st it begins. And instead of ending on October the 1st, because these two projects are now linked, it actually pushes out the uh, end date for the master. And not only that, but let me go ahead and click on the file tab. If I go back to the exercises folder and open up Excel, which Excel, as you can see down below, got pushed out to the 23rd. Double click what you do in one, ah, it does it into the other here. And notice how this one is faded in the original file. That's coming from the master. So when the manual has been completed, uh, for what? It doesn't say here, but when it's completed from another sub project that you don't know, because let's say that you don't own the master, you're just working in your original file. Anytime you see this, somebody else has linked up to you and put you in the master and set it up that says, okay, when one project completes and you can see manual complete, you're going to begin. And when is it going to begin? On the 23rd. And the predecessor is, oh, that's interesting, that you can see up here in the entry bar that it's going to be Access 2010. So what you do in the master will reflect in the sub projects here in the sub projects original file. So yes, if you're trying to hide this from the project manager of this original file, if they watch my training videos and they see something faded here and they see in the predecessor file, they'll be able to figure it out, especially if they come in their start date, which used to be on August the 1st, is now changed. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.